Mr. Oakham. Uh, uh, what Ms. are you doing Fenton. here in the office at this time of night? Uh, I had such a headache, I didn't yeah. notice the time. What is it, by the way? It's a quarter to eight. Why are you here so late? I might well ask you the same question. Oh, I left my umbrella behind. It's raining. On my way home from visiting a friend, I decided to call him and collect it. I have my key, of course. I saw the light on in here. I'm sorry. No, no, it's well. all right. Mr. Oakman, you aren't ill again, are you? No, it's just this wretched migraine. It's been with me most of the day. I keep pills in the desk here. I thought if I took some and sat quietly, it would pass. Must have fallen asleep. How stupid of me. Well, you're certainly in no condition to drive. I think I'd better call a taxi. And on the way to your home, I think you'd better tell me everything, Mr. Oakman. You can trust me, you know. No matter what trouble you're in, you can trust me. Suspense. The unusual, the unexpected, life, death, and sometimes something in between. Suspense. Well, you answer the call so promptly. Well, strangely enough, Inspector, I was on my way to this block of flats. I have a patient on the second floor, but uh, what seems to be the trouble? The caretaker of the block had his water overflowing from the waste pipe of this flat and used his pass key. Went into the bathroom. Oh, that's through this way. Mm-hmm. And this is what he found. Well, what do you say? Great heavens. A woman, the bath... Must have drowned. Oh, yes, she's dead, all right. Gold watch on her wrist says 6.30. This is... This is too dreadful. You see, I... Well, I, I know this woman, Inspector. I recognized her the moment I raised her head. She's Elaine Oakman. I knew her and her husband, Keith Oakman, quite well. Oh, what a dreadful tragedy. Poor Elaine. You knew her? Yes, I was more of a friend of her husband's, but I... Used to be very friendly. Any idea how she died? Well, of course, it's it's far too early to say. I shall have to make a complete examination. It could be many things. Heart attack. Heat overcame her. It's impossible to say right away. Oh, I can obtain authority to perform a post-mortem. Does that mean that you don't consider this to be a case of accidental drowning? Who can say? You say you knew this woman quite well. What sort of a person was she? Well, she was... Always extremely nice to me. I I rather lost touch with them after they decided to go and live in the country. There was a time when their marriage looked as though it was going on the rocks. They decided that a quieter life might be better for both of them. I didn't know that Elaine had returned to town. The caretaker says she'd been in the flat for about two months. Lived alone. Well, I'll uh, carry out a complete examination. and, and they... oh, I wonder who that can be. Want me to find out? Let's close this bathroom door first. Ah, this should be interesting. Good evening. Is Elaine here? Uh, Would you like to come in? Uh, Thank you. Uh, Perhaps I should introduce myself. I'm Jim Macy. Uh, Dr. Kenneth Raven. This is Inspector Kimball. (laughs) How do you do? Good evening. I didn't quite understand. A doctor and a, and a police inspector. There's nothing wrong with Elaine, is there? I, I've called to take her out. She's not in trouble, is she? You'd better put those flowers down, young man, and prepare for a shock. Elaine Oakman is dead. Dead? But she can't be. It isn't possible. She died earlier this evening in the bathroom. But I, I was speaking to her on the telephone just this afternoon. We, we made a date to go out to supper. I, I can't believe it. Well, what happened? I mean, how did she die? We're not sure. Looks as though she may have had a heart attack through taking an overhot bath. Oh, poor Elaine. She didn't say anything about feeling ill when I telephoned. She just said she was depressed, that's all. Depressed? Yes. Elaine is... was always so gay and carefree. It was unusual for her to feel miserable. That's why I brought the flowers. Why I was taking her out. You knew Mrs. Oakman well. 
Oh, yes, all my life. We used to go to school together when we were kids. She was older than me. Treated me like a kid brother. No romantic inclinations? <laughs> Good heavens, no. Now, I'm engaged to be married. A girl near my own age. Christine Larwood. She lives just out of town in Ashford. I see. Well, if you knew Mrs. Oakman well, then you may be able to tell us where we can get in touch with her husband. Oh, he lives in Ashford, too. Elaine parted from him nearly a year ago. I'm not sure of the address, but Keith Oakman's in the telephone book. It's an unusual name. I'm sure it's the only one in that district. Thank you. Uh, Doc, I wonder, would you mind, as you knew him, you may be able to break the news a little more gently than I can. Well, I'll do my best. The telephone's through in the hall, isn't it? Yes. Uh, no, don't worry, I'll find it. Now, Mr. Basie, perhaps you'll be good enough to tell me some more about Mrs. Oakman. You say that she and her husband were separated. Yes. She said she just couldn't adapt herself to the country life. That had made the marriage even more tedious. She had plenty of friends? Oh, yes, she was very popular at all the parties. Not any one particular person? No, I mean a boyfriend. It's funny you should ask that. I've often wondered if there was another man that he might be the reason for her marriage breaking up. But she never told me about him. Oh, she wouldn't anyway. Oh, why do you say that? Well, Elaine was funny in that respect. She always treated me as one of her family. But, well, you don't tell your kid brother about your romances... I'm sure there was someone there. Hmm. Well, we'll remember that. I can't get Keith Oakman, Inspector. Oh. His uh, housekeeper says he left his office early this morning and hasn't returned. I got the office number and rang that too, but there was no reply. It's not surprising this late in the day. Hmm. Well, we must get in touch with him as soon as possible. Do you uh, want me any more, Inspector? I'm I'm still feeling a bit shocked. No, no, you may go, Mr. Macy. Just leave me your address and telephone number, if you don't mind. Yes. Yes, of course. And I think we'd better get the body over to the hospital. The moment the photographers and the fingerprint boys are through, I'd like a post-mortem. It's essential that we know exactly how Elaine Oakman died. Well, Doc, what's the news? This morning. All the information you want is right here, Inspector. The tests show that the samples of blood from both sides of the heart do not have the same salt content. And what does that mean? It means that the woman died by taking in fresh water, which diluted the salt content on the left side. In other words, death by drowning in fresh water. Uh -huh. Yes. So it points to accidental death. Looks like it. You sound disappointed. I wouldn't say that, but I've got a hunch about this case. No other marks on the body? No, we're doing toxic tests on the blood, mm. but the blood specimen needs to stand in picric acid for some hours before I can report. I see. Look, Doc, can you withhold all information for a while? I have a special reason for asking this. Mm. If I report accidental death at this stage, they'll take me off the case, and I'm not satisfied. The moment I saw the body... I had a sure feeling that we were dealing with a murder. Uh, just a hunch or something made you suspicious? No, several things. Now, so many conflicting prints, you'd think it was a help-yourself supermarket. Elaine Oakman had a lot of callers. There was also this. I found it in the rubbish bin in the kitchen. Here, read it. Small card. Can't we forgive and forget as from tonight, K? Looks as though it came with some flowers. It was in a cellophane bag with a few cut stalks and leaves. I've checked. A bouquet arrived just after five yesterday afternoon. Hmm. Typewritten and signed with a K. Uh, do you think he could be... Her husband, Keith? May well be. You've traced him? Yes. It seems he hasn't been well lately. Herbie's secretary. She seems a sensible, efficient woman. I'm going back to my office. She says she'll come round and tell me everything she can about last evening. Sounds promising. All right, come along. I have an idea we'll learn quite a lot. I'm afraid that's all I can tell you, Inspector. I do hope that it's of some help to you. You're telling me that your boss, Keith Oakman, asked you to stay late at his office last night. That he then suffered a reoccurrence of his migraine attacks. You gave him his usual pills, which had a soporific effect, and stayed in the office until he had slept and recovered sufficiently for you to hire a taxi and take him to your home. Yes, that's correct. You see, Mr. Oakman suffers dreadfully with this complaint. When it strikes him, he can't do a thing. He must lie in a darkened room. 
I took him to my flat and left him while I got his car from the garage and parked it ready for him to drive home. Oh. And what time was that? Oh, just, just before midnight. Excuse me, but when I telephoned the office sometime earlier, there was no reply. Oh, I didn't answer the phone. I didn't want anyone to know. I certainly didn't wish it to be known that... Well, that I'd insisted he rested at my home. I mean, it's embarrassing, but you know what I mean. Mm, the main thing is that you were with Keith Oakman at 6.30 last night. Yes. Yes, that's right. I was. Are you quite sure of this, Miss Harris? You didn't perhaps go out of the office, leave it at all, and come back later? No, no, Doctor. I remember thinking that it didn't matter too much about working late because it was raining and I had no umbrella. There was no way that Mr. Oakman could have left his office and returned without your knowing? No way at all, Inspector. I don't quite understand these questions. Why is the time factor so important? You've asked me about my employer's physical condition, and I've told you all I can. What has all this got to do with Mr. Oakman? Mrs. Elaine Oakman, Mr. Oakman's estranged wife, died last night. You know that, don't you? I read about it in the papers this morning. She had an accident, apparently. Isn't that true? Supposing I told you... <laughs> no. Supposing I told you that the doctor's post-mortem revealed that Elaine Oakman was murdered. But surely that isn't possible. I mean, the report in the paper. If it was as simple as all that, I shouldn't be here questioning you, should I? I repeat, Miss Harris, supposing it is murder. Well, supposing it is. You don't seem surprised. I read the newspaper, Inspector. Elaine Oakman is dead. And frankly, an accident or not, I would still feel the same way. And what's that? I should still feel intense relief. Keith had a bitterly unhappy life with that dreadful woman. Oh, if she was killed, then I have only admiration for whoever did the deed. Elaine Oakman deserved it. I repeat, she deserved to die. trifle melodramatic, Inspector. But during the course of your investigations, you will find that Elaine Oakman was a dreadful woman. You will certainly find plenty of suspects. Elaine was extremely popular with a certain type of man. Uh, Miss Harris, that is quite an accusation. Are you sure of your facts? You profess to have known these two people, Dr. Raven. Surely, if this is so, you must agree with me. And marriage was a disaster. And it was solely because Elaine Oakman couldn't keep her hands off other men. There, is that frank enough for you? Well, I've told you all I can, Inspector. May I go now? Uh, yes. Yes, of course, Miss Harrison. Thank you for your cooperation. Oh, before you go, one small matter. You recognize this? What is it? Let me see. Oh, a cigarette case. No. No, I'm afraid I don't. Sorry. It's all right. Thank you, Miss Harris, for your help. Good day. Good morning, Inspector. Well, I suppose we must have learned something from that. What do you think, Doc? I'd say it was the classic case of a woman in love with her boss. <laughs> yes, I think you're right there. And what's your opinion of her condemnation of Elaine Oakman? Well, now, that's difficult for me to say. I, I can't say what sort of life Elaine was living in the city, although I do admit that in the old days she had the reputation of uh, a good-time girl. Why, she even set her cap at me at one stage. Oh, did she? Yes, uh, of course, I treated it as a joke. Could never be anything else. Uh, but, Inspector, what was that case you handed to Anne Harris, that fresh piece of evidence? No, it was nothing of the kind. Just my own cigarette case. Useful for taking fingerprints. I see. You You mean that, that you think... You that... can never tell, can you, Doc? If Miss Harris is that keen on her boss, then one doesn't know to what lengths she'll go to protect him. She may even have helped him to do a murder. You really believe that? I don't believe anything. I'm trying to find out facts. Look, I'd like to talk to Keith Oakman next, but this youngster, Jim Macy, and his girlfriend, Christine Larwood, are waiting outside. Would you mind talking to them? No, 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 of course not. But uh, what do you want me to say? You just appear to be entertaining them, filling in the time for me. But keep a watch on the conversation. They may unbend more in your company than mine. 
Very distressing, but I, I'm sure after a while it will be proved to be just another unfortunate accident. Oh, I'm so glad, Doctor. I was really very shocked. I thought I'd better report back to the inspector that Christine insisted upon coming with me. Oh, of course I did. It's been a dreadful time for Jim. So horrible to think of that poor woman dying in the way she did. Horrible. Oh, easy, darling. You didn't know Elaine then, Miss Larwood? No. No, we'd never met. Jim had told me all about her, of course. She'd been very good to him over the years. She was a good friend. Many people were critical of her free and easy life. Well, perhaps she was a bit bohemian, but as far as I'm concerned, she was always generous and warm-hearted. I'm very sad. Yes, I can well believe that. You must have thought a great deal to have called on her when you knew she was feeling low. Brought flowers for her, too. And sent me home early. Oh, did he do that? <laughs> yes. Pushed me on the 6.30 train with his arms filled with carnations to take to some other woman. Oh, darling, don't put it like that. You knew why I was doing it? <laughs> yes, yes, of course. <laughs> the doctor knows I'm only teasing you. Of course. Uh, will you excuse me now? I, I think the inspector will be awaiting the full details of the post-mortem. I'd better go to him. Oh, then you can tell us, doctor. Did Mrs. Oakman die a natural death? As far as I'm concerned, Miss Larwood, a perfectly natural one. Now, if you... Please excuse me, I must see Mr. Oakman, too. Well, Keith, it's a very long time since we met. Yes, yes, Ken, it is. It's quite a few years, eh? I'm uh, awfully sorry that it has to be under such very tragic circumstances. I can't tell you how shocked I was to be called into the case and find it was Elaine. Yes, I can't tell you what this has done to me. I've been trying to explain to the inspector. I, I still can't believe uh, it. Take a chair, Doc, and relax. How did things go outside? Oh, very well. Everything quite correct. I thought it would be. And now, Mr. Oakman, I'd like you to tell me about your movements yesterday as clearly as you can recall. Well, I'm afraid my recollections aren't that good, Inspector. Dr. Raven will confirm that I've always had these wretched migraine headaches. They started years back when he knew us quite well. Well, that's true. I've, I've often prescribed for you. I still use the same stuff. Well, yesterday afternoon, I had a particularly vicious attack... It was late in the afternoon, and I had some pills in my desk. I took some and turned out the lights. It's essential that I remain in the dark and rest. Everyone in the office went home. Everyone? Well, everyone, uh, except Miss Harris, my secretary. She came later on. She came in and found me at about 7.30. Uh, quarter to eight might have been. The migraine was passing, but my mind was still a blank. Miss Harris is used to these attacks, so she got a taxi and we went to her flat where I took another pill and remained resting quietly until she'd collected my car from the garage. Then, later, it had all cleared and I, I was feeling all right. I drove myself home. Mm. So from about five-ish until nearly midnight, you were more or less alone, suffering from migraine. And you don't remember anything happening during that time. Yeah. Other callers, telephone calls, anything like that. Well, I'm afraid you don't appreciate this type of affliction, Inspector. The subsequent loss of memory is quite common in these cases, isn't it, Ken? Uh, I wouldn't say common, Keith, but I, I've known it occur several times in your own case. Right. I think that's all, Mr. Oakman. Oh, uh, before you go, tell me, was your wife in the habit of keeping a diary? Well, I, I really can't say, Inspector. She was a stickler for writing things down, always kept an engagement book. I know that. I wouldn't be surprised if she did, you know, keep a diary as well. Why do you ask? Nothing. Oh, nothing. I just thought that if she did keep a diary and we could lay our hands on it, we'd probably save ourselves a great deal of interrogation time, wouldn't we? Didn't you say that I was at the office the whole while? Why did you say I returned later? Miss Harris, Anne, my dear, I know that you meant well by urging me to support your story, but really, the police would only have found out later on. Found out what? That I had a temporary amnesia, that after taking the pills, I can't recall what I did. I think I was in the office all the time, but I can't say for sure. I may have gone out, wandered the streets, I don't know. But aren't you afraid? Well, of what? The police will think that you went to call on Elaine. You were instrumental in causing her death. But why would I do a thing like that? Elaine wanted a divorce. You didn't want to give her one. There could have been a scene. You, you might have lost your temper. No, no. I don't think you appreciate the position you're in. 
Look at it this way. The office goes home at 4.30. You remain. You pretend to have a migraine. But I did. This is what the police will say. You take a few pills from the bottle, turn out the lights. You leave for Elaine's flat, throwing away the pills in a gutter. At the flat, you let yourself in with your key. You have a key to her flat, haven't you? Yes, I do. Well, Elaine was going out. She'd run the bath water, perhaps even stepped into the bath when you arrive. As her husband, you are about the only person on such intimate terms that well, that you could enter her bathroom without her screaming for help. Mm-hmm. I see what you mean. Mr. Oakman, Keith, you've got to face this. You're in grave danger. The way you've told the story makes the police think that you have something to hide. Have you anything to hide, Keith? Well, have you? <laughs> I thought I'd better come back and explain in more detail, Inspector. My secretary made out quite a good police case against me. Mm, Yes. Could have worked that way, couldn't it? But it didn't. No, of course not. What, then, you you don't suspect me? Let's say I'm not working on those lines at the moment, shall we? Then may I ask... What lines I am working on? Yes. All right, I will tell you. Then, with your permission, we'll try a little experiment in your wife's flat. Um... Anything you say, but please do explain. I'll try. First of all, motive. Who are the persons most likely to want to see Elaine out of the way? Well, you'd have to count me in there, I suppose. The estranged husband, the constant wrangle about a divorce. Naturally, you headed the list. There may well be plenty of people who think you did kill your wife. I firmly believe that your secretary, Miss Harris, does for one. Not that she'd let you down. In fact, I rather believe that she'd commit murder for you. You don't suspect her, surely? No, although she could have done it. But you're both so obviously trying to protect each other that it's clear you aren't lying. No. No, The guilty person is someone who wants a perfect alibi. You see, the person who killed Elaine drowned her, then let the water out of the bath and smashed the wristlet watch at half past six. An expensive watch. Asking a lot to leave it on your wrist while taking a bath. That didn't ring true for a start. As I was saying, the murderer then turned the water taps on to give a slow flow of water. By the time the bath water was up to the overflow and causing trouble, well over half an hour had passed. At half past six, the murderer was establishing his alibi. Mm -hmm, I see. It's clever. But who was responsible? I mean, who did kill my wife? Inspector, who is the murderer? Flat inspection. Shh, quietly. I don't think there'll be any need to unlock the door. Let me go first. Steady. Now, here we are. Evening, Doc. What, what the... Ken, Dr. Raven. It, it, it isn't you. It can't be. I see you're holding the diary, too. Yes, but I didn't find it. He did. Uh, but that's young Jim Macy lying there on the floor. That's right. I thought you wouldn't get here on time, Inspector. So I hid myself behind the door until after Jim Macy entered with his own key, had rummaged about in the desk and found the diary. Then I'm afraid I had to knock him out. Heavens, for one horrible moment I thought you'd killed him. Yeah, the doc was on my list of suspects too. He had access to the flats and being a doctor, no one questioned his comings and goings. The fact that his first name, Kenneth, began with a K like your own also made me suspicious. Initial K was signed on the note accompanying the first bouquet of flowers. But I think if Doc wanted to kill Elaine, he would have done so in a far simpler manner. Yes, you're right, of course. I, I didn't kill Elaine. This young man did. He was her unknown lover. He was planning to desert her and marry Christine Larwood. Elaine found out this and started making scenes. Miss Larwood comes from a very respectable, rich family. Elaine was the sort of woman who loved to make scenes. She threatened a scandal, and Macy knew the only way he could stop it was to kill her and throw the blame on you, Keith. I'm still not quite Macy there. sent her flowers. He switched cards in the rubbish bin later, insinuating that you were calling. He came in here earlier last night, forced his way into the bathroom, and killed Elaine by grabbing her by the ankles and holding her head under the water. Then, having seen Miss Larwood off on the 6.30 train, he was clever enough to turn up here with yet another bunch of flowers. Ah, nice touch. Yes, but how did you find all this out? We knew we'd have to trick him. So we spread around the story of a missing diary. We knew if he came back to search for it, he would be guilty. I see. 
So all this was written down in Elaine's diary after all. <laughs> oh, no. No, there is no diary. That's the doc's petty cash book. We planted it here earlier, just a hunch. But unlike the petty cash, I think it balances out. Don't you, Doc? Suspense. The unusual, the unexpected, life, death, and sometimes something in between. Suspense. Suspense.